Hi guys, James at Rampant Lion Reviews again for you today with another beer review. For this one we have a beer that is very very special. I'm very excited to do the video review for this one for you. Um, I tried this beer at Cafe Absites in Bamberg on tap the other night with Daniel and this is one of his favourite lager beers so this, you know, this is a pretty special review and I hope you guys enjoy it. So for this one we're going to go to the little town of Mönsambach which is part of the larger town Burgerbach. There's some kind of legal connection in there but for this one we're going to try my first beer from Brauerei Zeender. So this one is their Lagerbier Natterklub which comes in at 5.5% and as I said this is a damn good beer. In terms of a Franconian lager beer, it's difficult to get better than this I'm told. So yeah for this one very much looking forward to it and as always I hope you guys enjoy my take on this beer. So anyway as is usual with my reviews then I'll tell you a little bit about the brewery if you want to get straight to the tasting just fast forward all the usual links are in the description below that's the brewery website the link to my other reviews that hopefully I can do in the future from Brau Isaiah and their very first time I'm trying one of their beers or reviewing one of their beers I should say of course there's all the usual social media if you want to see more beer reviews do please consider subscribing to the channel the whole channel of course has a geography based tagging system so you can go into the home page and search for beer based on country, city, state, county, prefecture, whatever it is you're interested in. Do check out the playlist of beers from different countries. There is one there for all the German beers that I've reviewed for you. That's constantly being added to. And as always, please do get in touch and let me know some of the other beers and breweries that you guys would like to see me review. It's always great to hear from you guys that are watching the videos and the support that you show the channel is hugely appreciated. So anyway, to tell you a little bit about Bralai Zeander then, it was actually a little bit difficult to find information on these guys because their website really doesn't say very much which is, is kind of unusual actually so yeah see how we get on with this one but yeah the Zeander Brewery apparently has been in existence since 1808 and this brewery as I mentioned to you can be found in Franconia to the southwest of Bamberg in a little village called Mulsambach which I think only has about 100-150 people something like that but this is part of a larger town called Burgerbrach which is an old market town actually and I think for a long time uh, this the monks on back of course you know I think this town this little village was home to monks hence the name why it's monks on back monk in, in uh, German it does translate as monk but this brewery has been family run since 1930 and the current owner is Stefan Zeander but he's introduced a very kind of interesting business model to this company and he basically wants to it's almost like he wants to avoid commercialization of the brewery he wants to cut out all the middlemen and keep it purely as a family business so you actually can't buy these beers anywhere outside of the brewery. I bought this one in uh, the Birotech here in uh, Bamberg but I've got a feeling they probably go to the brewery and pick it up themselves rather than having it delivered. I'm not certain about that right enough but I get the feeling that is what you would actually have to do to get a hold of these beers. That said apparently in the article that I read on Cafe Ab sites they were saying that some of these beers do actually get exported to Scandinavia and a few over to are imported into America by Shelton Brothers as well. I think I think they do have an export beer that's a little bit stronger from what I remember but um, but yeah the brewery's a very very small operation it's famous for its kind of distinctive yellow restaurant that they've got apparently the homemade bread that they have in there is pretty damn good um, and you, the brewery you can go out the back of the brewery uh, out, out the back of the restaurant into the courtyard and you'll find the brewery in uh, a really nice red building it's quite a tall building actually but the restaurant um, is supposed to be very very good they've got their own special sausages their own homemade bread and one of the other interesting things as well is that they've got like a stork camera that you can watch on their website too. They've got a big sort of tall thing that storks can come and nest on. It said this year, 2018, they didn't have any visit them, but I've been assured that in other that in years gone by, they have actually had storks visiting them there. So on the website for this brewery, you can watch the storks nesting, which is uh, which is kind of cool actually. But the current brewmaster at the brewery is Alex Zankel, and they've got a few um, different beers there. I think there were seven or eight of them listed on on rate beer. They had a Hellas, they had a Hefeweizen, I think as well. They had a my I think they had a my bot beer they had an Oktoberfest beer and there was one or two others in there as well but this is the one that is very very highly rated this is regarded as one of the best lager beers in the world so this is why I reviewed that one for you but yeah that's all you really need to know about the brewery just now if you want to learn a little bit more you can check out the brewery website but it's probably better that you follow them on Facebook they do seem to be a little bit more active there the website 
doesn't really have all that much about the brewery on it. So yeah, um, that's kind of surprising. But you know, one of the things about Germans is very, very kind people, but they are, I've always found they are a little bit kind of private with things. So I do wonder when it comes to family businesses and stuff, if that sort of carries over. But like I said, this one is a 5.5% lager beer, one of the best uh, Franconian lager beers that you're gonna have. But yeah, lovely, really nicely presented. There's the little top label on this one. The good Mönchsenbacher, the lager beer, Natterthrub, which means unfiltered. And there you can see the monk enjoying his beer on the bottle cap there as well. Just let the camera focus on that. But yeah, it's one of these things. Um, it's always kind of funny when you think about, you know, in Belgium and Germany and things, you had the monks who brewed beer and they were supposed to fast for Lent, but instead of, they kind of got around it by drinking beer and getting drunk instead, which I, I always thought was... Um, was was quite funny so yeah but yeah without further ado then let's get this guy out and we'll get on with the tasting as i said i know this is a beautiful beer but i'm really looking forward to uh, to reviewing this one for you there we go nice little bit of smoke on the opening there and we'll get it out and into the glass i love this spitzy al glass that i bought it's always awesome uh, i just i i'm having too much fun here in bamberg let's say that there's too much of the the good traditional german beers to try Absolutely love it here. So, yeah. There we go. Put the last little bit of it in. So, yeah. I should give a big shout out in this video as well to my good friend uh, Peter over at the Clueless Drinker. He and I both love these uh, German traditional beers. So maybe at some point, I think some point in the fairly near future, you might see us here in Bamberg again doing some collaboration reviews together. I think that's definitely on the cards. I never need an excuse to come to Germany. Someone just needs to tell me, let's go when I'm there. But um, yeah, with this beer then, <clears throat> you can see it's poured a nice, bright, hazy kind of straw golden yellow colour, which is what you would expect from a lager beer. Looks very, very nice. One or two big bubbles sticking towards the side of the glass. Quite a few actually sitting at the bottom of the glass there, which is kind of cool. And you could see there was a solid finger and a half of a frothy, I would say, perfect white head on this one. If I put my fingers behind the glass, there you can see the level of haziness that this beer has. It is a Natta Trude beer, which means it's unfiltered basically. But yeah, this one, in terms of the appearance from a lager beer, from a Franconian lager beer, um, it's pretty much what you would expect actually, it's nothing, um, it's nothing unusual in terms of its appearance and when you open this beer up you do start to get some of these lovely um, bready malts coming out of it, from, of the aroma but let's take a closer look at the aroma and just see how we get on with this one. Oh yeah, it's a beautiful beer. You know, it takes me back, you know, I when I moved to Germany, when I moved to Heidelberg a couple of years back and spent my year there, this the, when I smell these the, these lager beers and the Helles beers and stuff like this, it really is just so nostalgic. It takes me back to that first drink I had in the Brauhaus there. Absolutely love it. But yeah, lovely big bready notes from this one. Sort of white, smooth, bready qualities. A little bit of a biscuity note in there as well. I think there's a tiny little bit of a biscuity. Um, sweetness in there, or cookies as the Americans would call it. It's got that lovely smooth, you know, these German malts, the German malts are just ridiculously smooth and it's got that lovely white bready smoothness to it. There's going to be a teeny teeny bit of caramel in there but that would be absolutely minimal. I think it's more of a, a biscuity note coming out of this one. And the thing is with the lager beer, it's not a beer that's overly complex in terms of its aroma, but if you get one that's really well done, the aroma is it's just beautiful. And as I say, for me, it's quite nostalgic actually to go back because it really reminds me of some of these beers I was drinking in uh, Heidelberg, although that's maybe heresy here uh, to talk about that in Franconia, a beer from a different region. But, um, but yeah. So you can smell the, the lovely noble hop qualities on this one as well. You've got a slight little bit of earthiness in there, that slightly sweet earthiness that I always talk about from the German noble hops. They'll be using Hallertau or Tettnanger hops in these ones, I would guess. Lovely bit of fresh kind of floral aromaticity. You've got that lighter grassy note in there as well. And of course, you've got that sort of citrusy, lemony, grassy type thing that you always get out of these beers. It smells very, very fresh, this one. Overall... I would say the aroma in this beer leans a little bit more towards the malty side of things. Yeah, to me the aroma in this case is a little bit more malty. Um, and you can get ones that are slightly hoppier, but at the same time it does have 
a lovely kind of hoppy freshness to it. It's got everything you would expect this beer. There's nothing overly surprising about this aroma, but it's just, it, it, you know, if you like this beer style, it's one of these things that you always think it really is pretty damn good. And I have to say, I like the aroma of this beer. So as I always say, just take a little bit of time and enjoy the aroma of the beer before you get stuck in. But we are going to have a taste of this beer now. I'm really, really excited about this one. So this one is the Monsambach Lager Beer from Brau Isaander in Monsambach, just out to the west of Bergerbach near Bamberg here in Franconia in Germany. This is one of the best lager beers you are going to find in the Franconia region. 5.5% ABV. Let's get stuck in. Slanger, Skull, Prost. Yeah. That is just a beautiful, beautiful beer. You know, the focus on, on beers and beer reviewing and things these days, so many people are doing, you know, these New England IPAs, the West Coast IPAs, you know, there's these big, hoppy, bitter beasts of beers. But the traditional German stuff, it's, it's a different world. It really is, and I absolutely love these beers. You know, the, the German traditional beers, they're so sessionable. And I really like that. You get the, in the Czech Republic as well, you get the, the nice kind of sessionable beers like this too. But this, you know, if a, if a German Helles is, is a, or a German Lager beer or a German Dunkel or a German Doppelbock, if they're well done, they're hard to beat. And for me, this is just, you know, it is an absolutely beautiful beer, this one. This is one of the best Lager beers you're going to find, I think, quite easily. One of the best Lager beers you'll find. Yeah, just so good. And I will say on this, this beer, it has the same flavour as it does on tap, but if you drink this one on tap, it's just a, a little bit smoother. If you drink this beer from the tap, and that's one of the things, it has that typical um, Brauhaus smoothness to it. The one on the bottle, I think, has a little touch more um, carbonation to it, but it's still really damn good, I have to say. So yeah, let's try and break this one down a little bit, but... I'll say straight away, this beer gets a massive thumbs up. It's just absolutely beautiful. If you like the lager beer style, you are going to enjoy this one. So yeah, you can feel in the middle of your palate, you've got that lovely um, pale malty quality. That just blankets the middle of your palate. And on top of that, you start to get the slightly thicker and um, breadier notes out of this one. But this beer, um, it does have a good little bit of crispness to it, this one. It's really nice. Yeah, I just love how everything goes together in this one. And you can feel as you go further into the aftertaste of this beer, the smoothness of the beer just comes out a lot more initially. When the beer comes in, you've got a lovely, um, you know, it comes in and there's a good little bit of carbonation there. You get a little bit of the hoppy bitterness and everything like that. It's just, um, it's just really, really nicely done, this one, I have to say. But, um, but yeah, nice sort of, um, nice, smooth, pale malty quality in there, lovely um, little bit of a biscuity sweetness. There is just a little touch of a biscuity sweetness right in the centre of your palate. But this one, it's not an overly complex beer. This is one of these ones that's just really well crafted. It is just very, very well done. So the malt base kind of has everything that you would want from this beer. And I'm finding that it gets a little bit sweeter the further and further that you go into the... Um, into the aftertaste with this one, it's it's just a beautifully crafted beer. This you can't say much more, much more than that about it. On the hoppy side of things, then back corners of the palate, you've got a nice little bit of that sweet earthiness, which is of course typical of the um, the German noble hops. It's just got a little bit of that sweetness in there, and that smooths out a little bit as you come further forward towards the very front corners of your palate you've got a little bit of a, a slightly spicy floral aromaticity and again that's a characteristic of the noble hops and then round the very front curve of the palate you've got that lighter grassy quality in there as well which is nice yeah and on the fruity side of things as well it's that sort of typical um it's that typical grassy citrusy flavour that you get from this one 
And in, in the aftertaste with this beer, you can really feel feel more of the kind of bready, the white bready flavours and a bit of the biscuity sweetness. That pushes its way out of the beer a little bit more. Some of the flor the slightly spicy floral notes are just lingering there too, and that citrusy grassy quality from this beer as well is just lingering there on the, the front of the tongue too. This is just a it's one of these beers. It's kind of Compared to what you can get in the whole kind of craft beer world, it's one that's quite simple in its flavour profile, but it's just beautifully crafted. That's the, that's the thing about these German beers, you know, the Dunkels, the the Hellesses, the Lager beers, the Pils, the, and things like that. They're not the most complex styles of beers in terms of their flavour profile, but if they're done well, they are really really just top class beers, and this one is definitely uh, one of those. If you drink this beer on the tap, it, um, it comes out even smoother and you get even more of that kind of smooth bready quality to it. In the bottle it's very very nice but on tap, you know, von Fass, it's just, it's even better this one. You know, if you get the chance to try this beer, I really, really recommend that you do. And you know, Daniel was raving about this brewery and if he raves about this brewery when he comes from Bamberg, you know it's going to, uh, you know, it's going to be a very, very good one. So yeah, if you get the chance to try one of these beers, it's a very, very rare occasion. So take full advantage of it because this is a beautiful beer. This is one of the best lager beers that you're going to find easy. Absolutely easily one of the best you're going to find. So in terms of the mouthfeel of this one then, I would say... Um, Yeah, it's a sort of mid-bodied lager beer, this one. Carbonation is quite smooth on this. As I say, though, if you drink this one from fast, the carbonation's even smoother than that. You get that typical German Brauhaus um, smoothness to it. Um, good little bit of hoppy bitterness to this one. If I was guessing the IBUs, I'd say somewhere around 30 for this one. I think it's around 30 IBUs, which is common for the style. Malt base, as I say, the malt base in this one is really mainly smooth actually. I would say it is more of a kind of smooth malt base, this one, but there is a little touch of sweetness in the middle of the palate, like I was saying, with those sort of biscuity and um, cookie flavours that you've got in here. Good little bit of hoppy bitterness, and it's got a little bit of a nice kind of uh, fruity, citrusy character on the end. It's a very refreshing beer, this one. As I say, in the bottle, you get a little bit more carbonation, so it's a little bit more crisp and refreshing, but the one that you get in the um, front of Fast, as I say, we drank this beer at Cafe Absites. If you drink that beer there, um, you know, it's just ridiculously, ridiculously smooth. So, um, yeah, if you get the chance to try this beer, definitely have a go. One of the best lager beers, I think, you're going to find anywhere in the world. And it's really cool to be able to review such a kind of renowned beer from this region, I guess, for you on the channel. So, yeah, let's leave it at that for this one. This is just a beautiful, beautiful lager beer. So really, I, I keep repeating it, but have a go at this beer if you get the chance. So yeah, this one it was the the Mungsambacher, just to make sure I pronounce it correctly, the Mungsambacher Lager Beer from Blaureisender in Mungsambach, just outside of Burgerbrach near Bamberg here in, um, in Franconia, Northern Bavaria in Germany. It's been a privilege to review this beer, very, very happy about this one. So thank you again for watching my beer reviews. Until the next time, please like, subscribe, share, all the usual YouTube stuff. Let me know your own thoughts on this beer in the comments section below. Let me know what your favourite beers are from the Blaureisender as well. Hopefully I can review some more of their beers at some point in the future. I'm sure I will be back in Bamberg to do that for you soon but um, yeah beautiful beer this one if you enjoy the German lager style you are most definitely going to enjoy this but once again thank you for watching my reviews and I will catch you guys very soon this is the Mungsambacher lager beer from Blaurei and in Mungsambach in Upper Franconia in Germany until the next time it's Lange just now and I will catch you guys very soon Slanger, Skull, Prost make sure you try this beer